Welcome back. Well, the West African Science Service Center on Climate Change and Adapted Land Use, that's what it's called. It's a large-scale research-focused climate service center designed to help tackle the challenge of climate change and enhance the resilience of human and environmental systems to climate change and increase uh, variability. It does so by strengthening the research infrastructure and capacity in West Africa related to climate change and by pulling the experts of 11 West African countries and Germany. This project is funded by the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. Uh, so we refer to it as WASCA from now. It's implemented in a collaborative effort by West African and German partners. We have uh, joining us from our Abuja studios two representative of that uh, uh, project. Now we have Dr. Solomon Ango. He's the project coordinator of uh, Green Hydrogen Atlas Africa. Uh, joining us there. He's also he's from Ulish Research Center in Germany. And then we have Professor Apollonia Ogimame, Director of Waska Climate Change and Human Habitats at the Federal University of Technology in Mida, that's Niger State. Good to have you, uh, Dr. Agbo and Professor Ogimame. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Good. So um, let, let's start with uh, Dr. Agbo. Help us to understand, uh, you are the coordinator of the project. Help us to understand what this hydrogen, green hydrogen energy project is all about. Um, thank you very much uh, once again for having me. So the project, it's uh, an initiative that's uh, aimed at looking at the potential of generating green hydrogen from across uh, Africa. So this is a partnership between the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research and WASCAL together with uh, uh, the countries, uh, African countries, especially within the Sub-Saharan Africa. And the aim of the project is to, to look at uh, the potential of generating green hydrogen from these countries in one way as uh, part of the energy sources that will contribute or that's going to play a role in the energy transition of the future and in another part because the green hydrogen is also going to play a role in terms of addressing the issue of climate change so the project is looking at potentials so we do like a resource mapping trying to quantify trying to to assess technically if we have um, the potentials in terms of resources but also in terms of other enabling conditions to make the production, the utilization of uh, green hydrogen possible in Africa. And Professor Imame, this project is fully sponsored by the German uh, Federal Ministry of Education and Research. Uh, it would be interesting to know their interests in this and uh, tell us more about the organizers of the project. Um. For the, for the German Ministry of Education and Research, the, well, the issue of climate change is on the front burner. And um, they were one country that was proactive enough to try to redress the issue of ad adaptation. And then Waska came on board because we are aware of the fact that West Africa is one of the areas that is most affected by climate change. And having a country that is known to be one of those that I would say probably accused of getting us where we are today to be interested in at least attempting to resolve the problem caused generally, uh, they, took the in they took interest in um, capacity building and that resulted to WASCAL and then WASCAL is not only developing capacities it is also involved in research and that was how we got involved with this green hydrogen project uh, potential as one of the areas that um, WASCAL can key into for West Africa so Dr. Angle, what are the main resources needed for this green 
hydrogen production. And based on this, can Nigeria be a green hydrogen producer? Um, yes, so to, to produce green hydrogen, uh, first of all, uh, basically speaking, so green hydrogen is produced when you, have, when you split water. So in chemistry, you call this electrolysis. So when you split water into hydrogen and oxygen, so basically these are the components of water. So when you have um, a source of energy, a source of direct current that splits water, then you get hydrogen and oxygen. And so this basically means that you need the energy source. In this case, it is green hydrogen, so which means you would need the source of renewable energy. So which this could be solar, this could be wind. Then you also need water because this, it is water that you are going to split uh, basically. And then you get hydrogen and then you get oxygen. So the hydrogen you, you, you collect and then you can use for various purposes. So if you look at these uh, basic components, so you need renewable energy. Nigeria has in abundance renewable energy. So whether it's um, uh, photovoltaic energy, so this is energy you can extract uh, from solar radiation in form of uh, electrical energy, or whether it's uh, also energy from the wind. So based on the study that we have so far done um, in the H2 Atlas Africa project, it's not in doubt. So we have the abundance of uh, uh, renewable energy, wind and PV, and these can be harnessed. So we have um, the land area that will make it possible also for these uh, resources to be harnessed. We have also water resources. So whether it's groundwater or whether you would need to also desalinate water to be able to produce uh, green hydrogen. So these resources we have in Nigeria. So based on this, it's actually not in doubt. From the work we have also done, it's, it's clear that Nigeria could be one of the, the big hubs for green hydrogen production, not just in, in Africa, but really globally. And Nigeria can also play a very, a very key role within the international energy market when it has yeah. to do with uh, green hydrogen production and also possible exports. So I, yes, I can say emphatically from the point of view of uh, technical analysis that we have done, Nigeria has all that is required to be able to produce uh, green hydrogen to drive her own economy, but also to be able to, to be relevant in the international energy market. Yeah, but having the potential, Dr. Agbo, is one thing, but exploring that potential is another thing. And you, you, are, you are the one coordinating this project. How far have we gone with exploring it? Because there are other countries, too, on the continent who have these potentials, and some of them seem to have gone ahead to start exploring, you know, the potentials. But how far have we gone, and what will make Nigeria stand out, you know, when you look at uh, potential in other countries also? Yeah, okay, thank you very much. This is, uh, this is really an interesting question. I think that uh, that is also part of why uh, we are grateful that we have this opportunity to, to, to have this discussion. So one of the things is that, uh, that is required is that we, uh, to, to get started, we need to, to get ready the enabling framework conditions that will make the generation, that will make the utilization, that will make also the, the, the export possibility, uh, options possible in Nigeria. So like you see in many uh, parts of the world, also here in, in, in Africa, there are, we would need to have a clear policy that supports the production and utilization of uh, green hydrogen. We need to also set in motion uh, what, you, you have, what is also done in many other countries, the, the national hydrogen strategy that, makes, that sets clearly a roadmap for, for the use of hydrogen within the energy transition in the future. We also need the necessary regulatory frameworks. We need the necessary legal frameworks. So these are all the things that we really need to set in place to get really uh, started. And I think that, um, you know, hopefully with what we have done on ground and with a number of uh, the MDAs within Nigeria that are coming together, we will be able to, to really very quickly set up uh, these uh, framework conditions to make the production possible. So, Professor Imame, other than the framework that uh, we need, according to Dr. Agu, uh, what else do you think can be put in place in Nigeria to maximize the benefits of green hydrogen energy? First, we have to develop our capacity before anything else. Because having a framework is one thing. Having the ability 
to ensure things work is a bigger aspect. So there has to be capacity building, and that I can say is already in place because there is a master's program in hydrogen in four countries in West Africa, which is part of this green hydrogen project. It is, it is meant to build the capacity of young Africans to be able to tackle the issue when, just like the question you asked uh, Prof, uh, Dr. Agbu, so that they will be able to you know, key into this and we are sure we have the local expertise. Uh, Nigeria is not yet one location where we have this master's program to build capacity, but very soon, I think in, uh, in the nearest future, we will have one of those master's programs under the framework of WASCAL. So WASCAL is a program that has to do with climate change, with a focus on different thematic areas, but it is also interested in renewable energy. And the first on the list is this hydrogen, green hydrogen project we're talking about. So apart from the framework, there has to be capacity building. And very importantly, investors have to key in because this is not something, it's a big endeavor to get into. It is not something that you leave to government alone. Government has to create the enabling um, environment, but investors have to also play their role. And one of such investors, if I may say, should be the apex gas and uh, oil and gas uh, industry in Nigeria, which is the NMPC and its uh, uh, and other similar oil and gas, um, how do you call it, parties who are interested in oil and gas activities in the country. Because um, now there's a war going on. And I'm sure everywhere there's this buzz about US and other countries trying to you know, break off from exporting or importing oil from uh, oil and gas from Russia. Now there has to be an alternative. This project is already on ground and that is where I think um, they have been proactive. The Germans have been proactive in developing this project. It is right now on ground. So while we are deviating from oil and gas, there's already something on ground that we can tap into. And for a country like Nigeria, we have an atlas that shows us the potential. So we will be, how do I say, we will be making a big mistake not looking into the possibility of tapping into this big time. All right. I interesting, especially because you brought in the issue of the war going on in Ukraine and the efforts of a, a lot of uh, uh, countries trying to, you know, re reduce the reliance on oil and gas, especially one that comes from Russia. You know, and some people have said perhaps this is what's going to force people to embrace the alternative energy. But back here in Nigeria, how do you see um, building interest? you know, for both for investors and then you talked about the master's program. How do you think that people can be made to be interested and look the way of this uh, hydrogen uh, energy, green hydrogen energy that you're talking about? How do you intend to catch people's attention and sustain it in the area? Okay, we've started with this program. This is a way of creating awareness that the program is in existence. Uh, we also planning with the right stakeholders to organize a stakeholders meeting that will also educate key stakeholders about hydrogen, the importance of uh, green hydrogen energy, what it can do, and the fact that we already have an at atlas on ground. So rather than reinvent the wheel, starting all over again, we can go from here, not just the stakeholders, but we can also, like Dr. Agbo said, there should be an enabling environment which will be facilitated by policy. So government has its role to play. There has to be some strategy. What is it Nigeria really wants to do with this, uh, with this um, green hydrogen um, um, energy? 
how it tends, where it, it tends to emphasize on and what it tends to do. So I think if we look into all of this, first, stakeholders awareness creation. Secondly, policy to enable, uh, to, to create an enabling environment. And thirdly, strategies to show how we intend to use or how we intend to be part of this global um, initiative. It's occurring in most countries. Uh, maybe Dr. Abba will tell us later the countries that have really taken this seriously and are working independently or with the Germans to achieve this. But we have to take care of, like you said, we have to take care of our own local needs. Stakeholders have to be aware. We can organize workshops, uh, come to uh, programs like this, create more awareness, okay. and then uh, educate the younger generation on how to use or how to um, not only use, but how they can contribute to ensuring that we have the local expertise that okay. can drive this, um, the new endeavor. All right, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Unfortunately, we do not have the time to take uh, Dr. Agu on that. Uh, but I'll uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Apollon Apollonia uh, Ogimame, Director of Waskal Climate Change and Human Habitant at the Federal University of Technology in Mina, Ninja State, as well as uh, Dr. Solomon Agbu. He is the project coordinator of the Green Hydrogen Atlas Africa. Thank you so much uh, for this enlightenment, and we do hope that you follow up the conversation uh, to gather more clouds on it.